Welcome to the Wolf Keeper. A show that's just about everything that you can maybe think about. Everything that you can feel that's inside of your heart. What I need for you to do right now is spend the next hour relaxing. Just stop your day before you go into 12 o'clock. I just want you all to close your minds, open your hearts. And relax and go on this journey with me. It's a beautiful place that you're about to go. Because I want to make you feel. I want to just open you up and think about some things you never really thought about. Right now. The Wolf Keeper. Come on. Good morning, y'all. Come on. It's the Wolf Keeper Show. Get ready. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, Woo. yeah, it's the Wolf Keeper Show, uh, your boy, Toriano Sanzoni, yeah, Chanel Nell, my boy Tyrone Scott, somewhere rocking the, the doggy dogs, Denzel's in his house, Shaq and Shaq. And for all the people out there that love us, we love you back. Thank you all. Get ready for an amazing show. With the Wolf Keeper. Get ready. Here we go. Uh. Good morning, good morning. How you feel, Nancy? I'm good. How are you? I feel amazing. Amazing. <laughs> she doesn't know. How you feel? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> you sure? I'm you just feel? mimicking you. Why you sounding all groggy? Who, me? Wake up. <clears throat> I'm up. You're acting like you're chilling <laughs> over there. We got, we got a job to do, girl. Come on. <laughs> I'm here. I'm up. I'm refreshed. You're fresh. Nancy, Nancy, how you out there in Strong Island, Rhode Island? Long Island, New York. <laughs> Long Island, New York. Where's your accent? What? Where's your accent? I, I have a little bit of an accent. It's not that strong. <laughs> so People want to hear Long Island, but I don't really... I don't really know anybody that says that. <laughs> are, you, are you Long Island? Are you are you born and raised though out there? I am. Yep. That's what's up. I love it. That's like such a cool um. That's such a cool area. Just I love New York. I used to live in Park Slope. Oh wow! Nice. Here's, here's our fun fact of the day. But you know what's funny? Because I was in Brooklyn. Like first time I went to Brooklyn was in '95. It was dirty and grimy. 
and just you can get robbed just walking down the street. And then yeah. I went there in like million. 2015. It was like Labradors and baby strollers. <laughs> it's crazy. Now it's like the townhouses are so expensive. It's so expensive to live there. I know. I remember when that was changing too. It's really interesting. Regentrification is taking over. Have you been in New York before? I have. Briefly though. Yeah. Really crowded and busy. Not anymore. No. Yeah. No. Not right now. How are you guys doing COVID out there? Are you all you are you all still We're quarantined fine. up? Is Como everybody, Como taking over? President Como? No, everybody <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Everybody is fine. Um, you know, we are lucky right now because our curve is down and all of that. Um but it's it's uh doing pretty good. There's more and more businesses that have opened. Um, it almost feels normal, but not all at the same time, uh, like a normal summer, but not at the same time. It's so it's a strange juxtaposition to be in. Um, but you know, it's, it is interesting to see. I'm glad that the pet industry is still hanging on and we doing rocking. pretty good. Pet industry is killing That's the right. We're recession yeah, I think proof, it's really. increasing. Yeah. We're really yep. recession. Cause I remember actually, um, quick story. Our, I was in the music industry working at BMG Records and Ed Maxson came in, this mean little short guy, like, this digital download's just a fad. It's not going to last. <laughs> and then it crashed. It literally crashed. Like, for real, like two weeks later, everyone came in and got fired. I said, I'll never work for anyone again. And that was 2000. And I was like, what are you going to do? And they're like, I'm going to train dogs. I'm like, what? Train dogs? Like, why? And I, I had no idea how big the dog industry was. Well, dog industry is massive, like, yeah. off the And that's what I was chain. thinking, too. I'm like, is it because, you know, when you get something, you notice, um, you notice dogs or whatever it is that you've gotten more? And I'm like, is it really increasing or is it because I just got Bentley and I'm noticing everything more? And I think that it's a little bit of both. I think, you know, we haven't gotten any stats as of, you know, six months, seven months, eight months into 2020 for COVID. We usually get the figures for the year before when we go down to Global Pet Expo in Orlando, which happens in March. And we squeezed mm -hmm. by, we just went to Global in February. It was the end of February. It was a month early this year. And we were super lucky because we actually got to go to Global and then everything shut down. But um, so... The last figures were almost ninety-seven billion dollars for the pet industry, just yeah. in the United States alone. Ninety-seven billion. Billion, yeah. We're and you know, honestly, I we have for for our organization, we have all different kinds of pet professionals, and of course, the places that were hit the hardest when the lockdown started in March was pet sitters, doggy daycares, dog trainers, um, to an extent. But I, I was like, train online, train online, telling my members, you know, be creative, you know, you can still do it. And that actually, I said, then you're going to actually, the pet parents are going to actually have to learn more about training their dog. Um, so a bunch of them were doing that. And so then, um, you know, also dog walkers, all of those people got, they've been hit the hardest. And so it's been sad to see that happen. Um, but on the flip side, I know some pet product manufacturers that are just crushing it. They're doing so, so well during this. Um, retail stores that, you know, once the grooming opened back up and they were, you know, essential and all of that here in New York and across the country, some of them are just doing tremendous. So like, you know, we're doing great there. We have no issues. So you always feel, I always feel bad if somebody's not doing well and try to be supportive and help them and come up with ideas that maybe will help. Um, but you know, it is kind of a roller coaster now, but the pet industry always seems to bounce back. And now we've had so many animals adopted during quarantine and a lot Crushing. of forced to failures, which is amazing. Crushing. Um, so, you know, I think it's just going to keep going up. Yeah. We, I mean, we're a fabulous industry because I saw it in, um, Oh one when I entered the industry. I mean, I, it was, I'd never in any industry. I've never seen numbers like that. And that was in 2000 because people were paying $500 a month for doggy daycare. I mean, the guy, named, yeah. shout out to Dan Rubenstein who gave me a shot back in 2000. I mean, he was, he was doing like 2 million a year in 2000 off doggy daycare, which I had no idea that a person would pay you to watch their dog. You know, that was old school, you know, your dog stayed at home. I think it's, yeah. 
But yeah, geez, that's five dollars a month for doggy <laughs> daycare. I mean, the dog mm-hmm. walkers killing it. I mean, groomers. Uh, my ex. Especially during a hard work day, like you, you have you come home from a hard work day, and then it's like you got to play with the dog and walk home. Doggy daycare, all, day, day for all <laughs> those things. <laughs> so, Nancy, can give us a tell people that don't know about American Pet Professionals exactly when you started and, and why you started and what's the mission? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, I started American Pet Professionals back in 2009. We were in the recession, right? And that just goes to show the resilience of the pet industry. Um, I started it because I always wanted to be in the industry. I was a serial entrepreneur. I trained dogs. I did pet sitting. I did, I created no corn, no soy, no wheat dog treats that I sold in different stores. That was not even a term when I did it, (laughs) organic treats. Um, And I did that for a long time. I've been reading Pet Age magazine for, I don't know, 20 something years. And I always wanted to work in the pet industry. Like you, I have a background in not entertainment, but in television production and uh, PR and trade shows and stuff like that. And I happened to be sitting at a um, networking event that I was talking about how you can get your business in the news, sitting next to a veterinarian. And she said to me, are there any pet professional groups here on Long Island? And I said, no, but you're like the third person that's asked me that in the last couple of weeks. I'm like, huh. So I looked around and I said, I could host one of these events. And three months later, in February 2009, I decided to host an event, and we had people from three different states all across Long Island, New York City, all five boroughs show up in uh, the middle of the winter, in the middle of the recession on a Tuesday night. Wow. And a lot of those people are still members today. It's crazy. How many so members I, do you have right now? How many what? How many members? We have about 500 members now. Wow. And is that all, yeah. is that all any pet professionals or just dog trainers? Yes, any pet professional. We do have dog training members. So we have some really interesting niches of pet professionals. People come up with their own idea. They make up their new category. Uh, When somebody joins, we have a drop down and we have over 70 categories. And sometimes I'll get an email and say, hey, I want to join, but your category is not listed. I'm like, what do you do? And then they tell me and my mind is blown because they've come up with this whole new category for the pet industry. I'm like, how about this title? (laughs) We'll give you that. Um, so yeah, so it started in 2009 and I started hosting, uh, networking events, educational events, bringing in speakers, just trying to help everybody really work better together. Okay. Uh, because my, my view in the pet industry is there's enough to go around and you don't have to be competition with the dog trainer down the street or the retail store in the next town. You guys can actually work together and be better for pet parents and ultimately for the pets. I love and that. that that's been my mission ever since. It's still my mission today. Um, we now have international members, which is crazy. I rebranded from Long Island Pet Professionals to American Pet Professionals back in 2013 at the end because we just had people joining from different areas, and I'm like, this is getting crazy. Um, and I've hosted over 125 networking events. We now do weekly networking events on Zoom. Uh, which we have been doing for years, but it was monthly. And then when COVID hit, I was like, once I got my brain wrapped around what was going on, that we weren't going anywhere, I was like, all right, I got to jump in and help everybody. So now we do it weekly. We have different themes. We do webinars where we bring in experts, um, anything to help the pet professional, from marketing to growing your business to how to acquire customers, uh, bringing a product to market, anything in the pet industry, um, and then connecting people. That is so awesome because there's, I know we have the association for pet dog trainers, which is strictly yeah. dog trainers. You got, uh, was it um, canine professional dog trainers, CPDT. And there's some yeah. other international association for cat canine. So I know there's a dog, but are there, how many other like pet professional organizations that you're covering? That's really cool what you're doing. That's super unique. Yeah, there's a lot of really wonderful organizations and re, you know, that are um, specific to dog training or pet sitting or pet product manufacturing. And we do our best to work with everybody. Like I love working with other organizations because it may not be the same thing, but we'll definitely run parallel to each other and be able to work together. Are there other Um, organizations out there like you that, that, that cater to like pet professionals in general, or are you, are you unique in that space? We are unique in the space. We've been around for almost 13 years and um, there's like smaller chapters, like maybe a Facebook group and stuff like that, that people are just sharing ideas locally to where they live, but not in the uh, broad sense of what we do. That's cool. So 
in the, in the middle of the show right now, if pet professionals out there listening, where's the best place to find find you? What's the website? Yeah, the website is AmericanPetProfessionals.com, and it's all spelled out. And I'll give you a little marketing tip. When I was going to rebrand, I had United Pet Professionals. I had U.S. Pet Professionals, and I was going through a thing, and I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> American brings you right up to the top of all the directories. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking of a pet business name, start thinking at the top. Different letters, different A's. <laughs> yeah, pet idea. Bing. Yep. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm about to do. Um, so let's rejoice. Let's go ahead and put that website up on our Facebook, so AmericanPetProfessionals.com. Let's um, let's put that up there. And then what's your what's your Instagram and Facebook handle? Sure. So Instagram is at American Pet Pros, um, just P R O S at the end, and then it's the same on Twitter. Uh, at American Pet Pros and Facebook. If you just look on Facebook, AmericanPetProfessionals.com. That's what's up. Um, let's talk doggy dog. So um, the dog um, industry, I feel this is my personal belief, and I wrote about this in my book, about one day there being mandatory dog training um, like there is in Switzerland. Um, you have to, your dog must be trained. It's not even an option. You have, uh, I think, a month after you get the dog, the dog has to be trained. Um, I want to see that happen in good old America, and I want to see certified pet dog trainers. So in Switzerland and Germany have some of the strictest laws that I've ever seen in the world where you have to be certified, right? You can't just say, hey, I'm a dog trainer. You know, you can't just start a Chanel canine tomorrow. You have to go through the <laughs> veterinarian board. So what's your stance on that? What do you, how do you feel about, would you support a bill like this? Would you, would you, um, would you be for mandatory dog training and mandatory certification of dog trainers? So there's a couple of things with it. I am a full big believer in education, whether it's educating the dog and educating the new pet parent, because I feel like a lot of times it falls on the pet parent. So my background is I used to teach uh, responsible dog ownership classes. We had no dogs in the class. Mm -hmm. And we would have trainers, veterinarians, mm -hmm. and myself. And I covered, like, local laws, what you should know. As a pet parent, this is what you should do. Um, and then we had the veterinarian covering, like, veterinary stuff. And then the dog trainer that, like, knew every single dog training technique. And then our goal was, with that class, was to help educate people. It was also during the recession, so people were returning their dogs to shelters for no reason or for um, behavioral reasons, I should say, um, that they were frustrated with. And they wanted to make it mandatory, and I said no at the time because I didn't want people to feel like if they were getting a dog that now they have to take this class. I don't disagree with you. I think it would have to be laid out in a way where everybody could come together and agree on it. And I think that's going to be the hardest part um, of something like that. Because I think, you know, here in New York, dogs need to be licensed. I don't know if it's the same way across the country, but they don't really enforce it. So it's just a license fee that you have to pay every year if your dog is spayed or neutered or if he's not. Um, and you have to go and get your dog registered, but they don't really enforce it. I think they could take that licensing fee and put that towards helping educate pet parents that first month that they have a dog because most people are asking all of the same questions. You know, Toriano, you get the same questions yeah. probably every single day, all day long. So if they put something, you know, take that towards it and have them build themselves up, I think it would really be an amazing thing um, for people to adopt a dog, get a dog, and oh, by the way, here's the course that you can take. And maybe even if there was an online portal to it, like a quiz, like they had to take something online and then be in person or, you but know, you, maybe not you wouldn't person, make, you wouldn't make them take it. You don't see. You would don't, I make that? You, you I, I think it, it would mandatory? be encouraged. What about mandatory? I, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like that it would be, it's going to be a battle. It shouldn't be. I want to see people more, you know, well-educated about their dogs and more well-trained with the dog, the dog's more trained. Because unfortunately, when you hear about something happening, the dog gets really pushed to a shelter, or if there's a fight, you know, you, you might blame the dog, but maybe the dog was not trained, or maybe the people weren't trained on how to understand dog body language, dog behavior, all of those things. There's so much that goes into it. 
Um, I think that, you know, the more education that somebody can have for being a dog parent, 100% they should do. We taught that class for five years. We taught 2,500 people. We helped a lot of dogs not be tossed to the shelter because people would email me on a weekly basis and say, thank you so much for the class. We listened to what you guys said. We listened to what the trainer said. We feel so bad that it was actually us and not the dog, and now we're enrolled in dog training. <laughs> so, you know, it was a win-win. Here, here's a loaded question for you. So new administration is 2021. Nancy, we love your organization, right? We're no what everyone else said. We're going to make mandatory dog training happen. Who do you put on that board to write that, to write the, the, the bylaws? I think it definitely, you have to have a lot of really well seasoned dog trainers on there. And that's part of the problem with laws that get passed, especially when it comes to animal laws, because they don't have enough experts or people that work with animals on a regular basis to sit with them and go over the laws. There are some exceptions here in New York. We've had some really great laws passed on asking to name them because I can't remember on animal cruelty and stuff like that. Um, and they did have people helping them like, this is what happens, blah, 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 blah. But I think there should be a, um, a well-vetted board of people that are working daily in and out, people from animal shelters, dog trainers like yourselves, um, across the board to make sure that it's done properly and done correctly. Who could be in charge of that? I have no idea. <laughs> me. I nominate me. <laughs> yeah, you. You do it. <laughs> well, you want, you're, you're really interested in doing it. So I, if I were you, I would put together – Something that, you know, uh, a, do a document or something that can start start the ball rolling if that's what you really want to do and try to get that core team of people around you. Well, I, I see it happening at some point in time um, just because we, we spend $1.2 billion a year in economic damage from dog bites. Um, we're averaging about 800,000 people. And that's, this is just documented people. I mean, of that yeah. have to go to the hospital. When you go to the hospital and get bit by your dog or your dog bites someone, you're supposed to, you know, report, report it. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't go to the hospital, um, yeah. number one. And then two, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, when people go to the hospital, a lot of them lie, especially when it was their dog that bit, you know, I hear that all the time, you know, um, the dog bit the sister and then the sister, the, you know, because at least here in Chicago, as soon as you get bit, the police have to show up to the emergency room. Um, is it like that out there? I don't know what the stats are for dog bites in New York. Um, my take on that is that people just don't understand dog body language. They don't understand dog warnings. Back in the day, I did pet sitting, and I went to go meet a client, and they had two dogs, and one dog was really scared standing back. I don't know if you can see people that are watching the dog behind me was a scaredy cat. Um, and so I said, oh, I understand my dog's a little nervous meeting new people. I'll, you know, I'll give her time to come up to me. And the other dog was very happy go lucky. And then she said, oh, can we come into the living room? Sure. No problem. We walked into the living room. Her dog that was scared, quote unquote, <laughs> got up onto the couch. She was a mutt. She was about 50 pounds. And, um, I walked past her and she growled at me and she said, and it wasn't like a little lip curl. It was a growl. And she's the, the owner said, or the pet parent said, oh, she, when she growls, she means it. And I said, dogs usually do mean it when they growl. Like, <laughs> how else would you interpret that? But that's the problem. I, I honestly believe that's a big part of the problem is because people like to say, oh, he might growl, but he's not going to do anything. Or, oh, he, you know, he might not do that. My current dog loves to howl at people, which can be off-putting and scary if they're not sure what that howl means. It's never a growl. He has never growled at a person um, once or twice at a dog that was like charging in his face, but it's always like he growls a little and he's out. He's not, that's it. It's never more than that. He is happy go lucky, friendly, loves everybody. But I also don't let him go up to every person or I don't let him go up to every dog because I'm looking at that other person mm -hmm. or the other person's dog body language. It's really other dogs because people yeah. will say, my dog is super friendly at the end of a 50 foot retractable leash and the dog is trying to kill your dog. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. We're training today. And I just keep walking. So I think that a, a lot of it is denial for people having a dog with an issue. If a dog bites, 
um, or they are just not sure how to handle, um, you know, a dog's behavioral issues. I met somebody yesterday. She has a dog who's just like my dog. He's about six months old, and he was barking at everybody at six months. And he didn't seem scared. So I was like, have you seen a trainer? She said yes, but he wasn't doing that when we saw the trainer. I'm like, you need to get a trainer back. Yeah, and I think, too, I mean, especially because there's so many new exotic um, breeds that are being produced, you know, people are mixing Burmese mountain dogs, which is a hunting guard dog, and they're mixing them with poodles, which are French guard dogs, and mixing Labradors, which are hunting guard dogs, with poodles, which are guard dogs, and they're mixing, you know, German Shepherds with Malinois, like I have one in my class now, which is a German Shepherd mixed with a Malinois, you know, so there's, and they're mixing pit bulls with Connie Corsos, I mean, so... Yeah. A lot of these breeds that are independently challenging by themselves now are being yeah. combined to make these designer breeds. Um, and people don't understand. They love their dog, but they don't understand um, dog psychology. And I just, um, I would love to see an organization like yours. I, I, you know, you and I, we, you know, first time we talked, we were talking for literally hours because I'm just, that pumps me up. Because <laughs> I always, I told you like back in, because back in, um, in 20 years ago, I mean, American Kennel Club, which has been around forever, you know, they had these hardcore requirements for canine citizen, you know, evaluators. Like, I couldn't get in. They told me, they, they literally, they called me up and told me they denied me entrance <laughs> because they said I trained too many pit bulls, which was, you know, completely absurd. And then now, right. they, at least they had some kind of criteria. Now I see some of the people that are in CGC shouldn't be even called themselves a dog trainer at all. You know, that um, and enough people don't have enough um, experience to call themselves professional dog trainers, especially when you're talking about canine psychology and all the things that can go wrong, you know, not understanding a South African Borbo or a Fila Brasilaro or a Presa Canario or a Connie Corso or, you know, a Dog Argentino. And these are all I breeds. love all those breeds, sorry. <laughs> and these are all breeds now that are popular because they look great in the Range Rover. They look great, you know, walking down the street. Wow. They're... They're, they're showstoppers, so people are buying more and more, you know, exotic breeds, not understanding what they're, get, what they're getting themselves involved in. I mean, Chanel, what do you have? Uh, the Black Russian Bear Terrier? Chanel, no, me? What's your, what's your little dog? What's that exotic breed you have? He's a golden doodle. Oh. He's a black, like a black and white <laughs> golden doodle. <laughs> I knew it was some exotic A miniature that, golden doodle. That, it's like 30 pounds. Is he still a puppy? He's two. Oh, okay. So there you go. He is a miniature. Because sometimes people get a golden doodle and they're like, it's supposed to be 25 pounds and the dog's 110 pounds. Right, right. I've and I thought it was going to get bigger. Yeah, I thought it was going to get bigger than what he was, but he just stopped growing. So. That I sounds mean, like a, a good perfect, size, though. Yeah, it's a perfect size. Yeah, because he's not like, you know, overcrowding the space or anything. He's perfect. But Toriano, I have to say, I've loved all those breeds for 20 years. I've been to rare breed dog shows. People People didn't even know what a Connie Corso was. They thought it was a big pit bull. I'm like, no, no, totally different from Italy. Not a pit bull's personality at all. Like, completely different. Well, and two, I mean, and don't own one. You know, there's no reason to have one. I mean, the people want them. I mean, I had, I mean, the first time I trained one, it was after it put 50 stitches in this woman's sister's arm. I mean, it completely, oh, it, it, it broke. I mean, her arm literally was like hanging on i mean there's so many i mean you couldn't you couldn't see it but if i mean if i cut my beard off i mean I, my entire lower face is reconstructed surgery i mean i've been in the wow. hospital cumulatively over a year due to dog bites and that's just occupational hazard you know being a race car driver you're right. going to crash you know you're going to miscalculate so that's could you see your i'm just touching on this right now because obviously as a dog trainer i love that you have that you've taken the time and energy and dedication all these over a decade plus to organize pet because pet professionals i mean we're a little nutty i mean we you have to be a little nutty to deal with i mean each industry within the pet industry is a little nutty i mean groomers <laughs> i think that's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world you know pet, dog trainers dog walkers dog <laughs> anything when you, cause you're dealing with something that has teeth and it's, it's any given sunday something can go wrong you know, um, could you see your your organization specifically with the with the dog trainers though um, coming together for the coalitions? Going back, circling back, 
because I really see that that's going to have to be the – it's going to happen. Someone's going to do it sooner than later. Could your organization be the one that initiates that, like, mandatory well, certification? Of it's, not a, it's not exactly what we do as an organization, but I will tell you a couple of years ago that um, – they were trying to mandate uh, dog training here in New York to make a, have a license, but there wasn't really any information behind, like if you got a dog training license, what was your schooling? Who did you, it doesn't matter what kind of training you do. Like there was nothing behind it. They just wanted to create a license based on a very sad situation of somebody that was a dog trainer that was really abusing the dog and it was mm. caught on camera. Um, and it was h horrifying to watch. But um, so Actually, what happened was one of our members got everybody together. She runs a really incredible um, dog. It's not even training. They, ha they have um, dogs that are therapy dogs and dogs that work with kids with special needs and go and they do all kinds of fun things with okay. the dogs that are, you know, therapy dogs for them. So she actually had about 50 dog trainers from our area in there to discuss what was going to happen. But nothing ever came of the licensing uh, for dog trainers in New York. So I guess it just kind of went away. I don't know. Nothing really happened. Um, and it was, in my opinion, it was great to see all these different types of dog trainers in one room, you know, discussing something, everybody, you know, getting along. And, and it was real for me. I love that. Cause I'm like, it doesn't matter if you're what kind of dog training, in my opinion, you're doing. If you guys are, your goal is the main thing is to have a well-behaved trained dog and hopefully educate the pet parents um, and seeing them all work together and talk to each other and everything was just really fantastic. Unfortunately, nothing really came of that, but that's not really what our organization does. I think if anybody was going to, like you mentioned before, some of the uh, um, association dog trainers, uh, of associations of dog trainers, they might be more apt to do something like that because they have the core base of dog trainers already in their audience. Uh, we are more for, you know, helping pet professionals learn and work um, different areas of their business, learn how to promote themselves, learn how to get business, you know, like a gazillion things that goes into it. But that's kind of more what we're, our core is. The one other thing I will say to your point is when it comes to dog breeds, you have to do your research. I used to say that in the dog training class all the time. Like you might fall in love with a dog and that's okay. And if you're buying or adapting a dog, hopefully you're adapting that. If you're getting a dog for a breeder, do your research. Even if you have the dog now and you're like, holy moly, this was not what I signed up for. Right. Do some research because if you learn what they were bred to do, I've known some amazing Connie mm -hmm. Corsos over the years who would never even lip curl at anybody, but they are guard dogs. You know, you have to know what dog you're getting. Like you have a golden doodle, know what a yes. golden doodle mm -hmm. is, what they were for, their retrievers, and what the poodles are super smart dogs. They're both really smart dogs. But, mm -hmm. So I have, my brother has a, they, um, has a, a mutt that he adopted from a local rescue place. He's crazy looking. He's adorable. He's so sweet, so smart. He's small compared to my dog. They have a blast playing together. But we couldn't figure out in the beginning what was he. It was some sort of terrier thing. And somebody posted a dog <laughs> for adoption, I don't know, on Facebook or something. And I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly Oliver. It looks exactly like him. And you know what he is? He's a border terrier and a schnauzer because he looks more schnauzery and i'm like aha i'm like oh, that wow. makes so much sense because he does all those border terrier traits he runs to the border he goes after the bunnies in the yard like he does all that stuff so i always say even if you have a mixed breed you have to know what those breeds are and then do your research if you're not sure talk to breed people find out about it talk to breed uh, rescues find out about the dog because there's so many things that your dog might be like doing that's driving you crazy or you just don't know about and then once you start learning them you're like oh well now i know it makes sense <laughs> yeah see, that's a fabulous point to seek you know seek a professional you know we talked about that yesterday um on our show with um with jonah with jana i'm sorry um as far as she's a pet nutritionist you know that's a whole world by itself, you know, understanding nutrition. But when you get a yep. dog, a person definitely should seek a professional to help them understand, um, like, you know, why that breed, what that breed does, what that breed historically. And just, just so we're clear, too, um, I know that's not what your organization does, 
I just like you know, I see you. <laughs> you have great energy. I mean, in twenty years, I've talked to. I mean, I've I've talked to the heads of all these just different industry of those different organizations, and they do fabulous work. I think a challenge I've seen in the dog industry because, um, which some people might not know, um, it's extremely competitive. I mean, I was in the music industry, which I thought was one of the most competitive entities on the planet, and it, it was not. And I was as high as you could go. You know, I worked for Prince. You know, I worked for Puff Daddy. It wasn't until I got to the dog industry, I was like, wow, this literally is more competitive than the music industry. Dog people get nuts when you go to these shows, pet professionals. I mean, and it's probably gotten a, a little bit better than it was 20 years ago. But 20 years ago, it was it was like trying to join the mafia. It was like there were no <laughs> joke. And some of the people, I'm, just, I'm serious, we were super aggressive. Then. But you have, you're so awesome, too. You just have, I just love your perspective on it, too, because you you've combined that's a that's a lot to do to have an organization where you're working with all different types of pet professionals because I yeah. mean, there's so many it's we're so personality based we're so this is the only way you do it sometimes based and, and so you're like the ultimate <laughs> principal it's of the a big school umbrella. <laughs> making everyone <laughs> you know bringing everyone um under i would love to see something like that happen I mean, someone has someone is is going to happen, but I think that you have the the foundation for something like that to happen because part of it is just is it something that is that someone that's really non biased to all the other industries. Yeah, I definitely you know when it comes to like all of the areas of the pet professionals that we cover, it is a lot and. It does seem like taking on a lot, but when it comes down to the core part of business, there's a lot of similarities. We also have a lot of nonprofit organizations and animal rescue That's organizations awesome. as members, and it's all very similar to what they are doing, That's their so end goal, cool. right? To get a dog into a home, a cat into a home. We have horse rescue members, that kind of thing. Um, I definitely, you know, it seems like it's a lot, but it's very similar. And I am one that if I don't know, I'm going to find the best expert, the best person that knows what they're talking about to come and talk to our members. And it, sometimes that takes longer than it is. We had, um, we had this amazing lady, Allie Craig, a couple of years ago that did a webinar with us on understanding the psychology of your customer. I heard it on a business podcast and I was like, oh my God, that would be such a great webinar for our members because that's something that I think we all could continually learn about, right? right? As we're getting new customers and all that. I almost gave up. I didn't because I don't give up, but I almost gave up trying to find an expert to understand that. And I don't even know with the research, I was asking a few people that I knew that were in that area. And then I finally found her and was completely blown away on our webinar by what she had to say. So, so and cool. of course it ended up helping anybody in no matter what your business was. So that is so cool. So did you, yeah. I mean, and, but then the other thing too, where you're, you're awesome. This, this, I just love, I love your business in, in all together. Uh, Thank you. Cause we just, we, we just need more professionalism and just more organizations that, um, and I'm calling people out right now. Cause some of them, you know, they, they're too exclusive. They try to, you know, they don't make it super inclusive for everyone to just freely join and be a part of the, the team. It becomes too competitive, but that's not your energy. So I just, you know, kudos yeah. to you for that. Um, but did you, Thank how you. Did you, did you grow up as a child? Did you grow up with like just animals across? How you, cause you, you have to have obviously across the board love. I mean, I love dogs, I love cats, but you're dealing with everybody. how did you get to that point? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always, you know, like most pet professionals just always loved animals. And, um, when I was five, I was very fortunate or six, very fortunate to go visit family in Denmark and they had horses and I was hooked. Um, and then I always wanted a dog. We had hamsters and guinea pigs and cats and stuff like that, but I always just always wanted a dog. And, you know, 10 years ago, if somebody said, are you a cat person, or a dog person? I'd always say both. I haven't had a cat in a long time, but I still miss having a cat, right? And so I just always loved animals. And I always knew I wanted to work with animals. And Mariano, you'll appreciate this. When I was 10, we took an astray, or 10 or 12, I think it was 10, we took an astray dog that nobody wanted. We found out it was an oops litter that I think the people just let loose and it followed a neighbor home. And then it was like a neighborhood war of who was going to have this cute little dog in the house. It was actually a cockapoo, which was not even a term back then. Um, she was a cocker spaniel poodle. And um, 
we finally won that neighborhood battle of <laughs> who's going to keep it because it was between me and a few friends. And my father said to me at the time, if we keep this dog, and he was not really a dog person, he was more of a cat person. If we keep this dog, you have to train it. I'm like, okay. So where did I go for dog training? Can you guess? You went to... Pittsburgh? No, not back then. You went to... Uh, back then? The library. Oh, okay. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> there was no, there was like, you know, there was a guy on TV oh, that I'm not Mart? even sure who it was. No PetSmart. There was like, no, only, there was only, one only, pet store. Only book out there was the Polar Method of Dog Training. That was it. <sighs> there was two. I don't remember which they were. I was 10. Um, anyway, I took out the two books on dog training and I taught that little dog how to heal, how to sit, you know, all the, the stuff. Uh, she was named Peppy. Peppy. She had a lot of energy. Oh, that's cute. But here's the thing. She didn't like other dogs. She actually was crazy if another dog was coming near us. Animals, anything. Um, she, If family was coming over, we had to put her in another room and shut the door. She didn't like men except for my dad, who was not yeah. a dog person. He uh -huh. absolutely loved her. Talked so in the high-pitched voices. I just kind of so. said this and, as like, oh, by the way, we, we got to back up two minutes here. What's up with you were have family in Denmark. That's like a, oh, by the way. Like our, our <laughs> yeah, horse, they're all here now. Well, our, our horse table in Denmark during the summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, was, it was a pony. And here's the thing. I didn't want to wear the helmet. <laughs> who was in Denmark? Who, who, we have family in Denmark? How's that? Who's in Denmark? Uh, they're all here now, actually. But I had, it was my dad's side of the family, cousins, and they're all here now, living here now. But um, yeah, we went there to visit them, and they used to come and stay here. So, so um, you know, on, in, in New York. Country. So, I love that. That's, yeah. That's so pretty. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I always loved horses, but that was it. I was like, I was like, bit. I was like, I want to, I still have yet, yet to get a horse, but I've been riding my entire life. I haven't gone in a couple of years, though. And you know what? And that, I mean, that's really the, cute. With the days, with the days of everything that's going on in the world with all the social unrest and COVID and depression, yeah. you know, all that other stuff that's going on, I think animals are just, not, not I think, I know animals are just the thing that brings people it's together. It's like an outlet. They make yeah. people happy, yeah. they bring in love. I mean, like, I was walking my little French bulldog yesterday downtown, and, like, I was just like, wow, people love Frenchies, number one. Like, people, yeah, it, I Frenchies, to me, are going to save the world right now. Like, that's <laughs> me, more Frenchie out on the street. That and, sounds like a slogan. <laughs> are so, yeah, they're popular now. because no, I really, they I, are. Because I'm just, I'm so tired, and he's like, dude, I got to pee. So I'm just like, <laughs> and so, like, I'm walking home, and then, like, it's kind of like an issue walking a Frenchie because it's like hanging out like with a celebrity because you can't you can't go anywhere walk, you know without people and you see that look already like you're ten feet away and all like oh my god and you're like oh damn but I was like all right fine <laughs> so like five pets later I was like wow this dog really has power to make people touch I mean because it's not like you see someone sad and you're like. Oh my God! You look like you're having a bad day. Let me hug you. Let me touch you. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. dogs are the only living creature, and and cats you can't touch. You can't hang out with a hamster. I mean, dogs are really the only creature on the planet that someone sees and someone's like, "Oh my God!" And you just see hands coming towards you know, and then you touch it, and then depending upon the breed, like Frenchies, people are like literally on the sidewalk on their back, letting the dog jump on them. They want to pick them up. They want to put their face in their face you know i i just really commend that when you when you're talking about horses because that's the same thing i learned a lot from horses when i was living in um in switzerland oh, i'm sorry not switzerland amsterdam and my friend um who i had on an earlier show um cheyenne she rides horses in such with the um with with, with horse therapy that's out there dog therapy no, I got a cat named Buddha. I mean, I love this cat because he just cats do weird things you can't even explain. But um, I, I'm really appreciative of your industry, your your organization, because you're bringing the animal kingdom under one. Let me ask you this: um, if if a person wants to join an organization, like walk us through how does that how does that work? 
Sure. So, um, first of all, I just have to backtrack. You were you lived all over the world, so that's a little bit more interesting than me going to Denmark for a week. But <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but um, and Frenchies can save the world should be a slogan. You need to make that into a T-shirt and sell that because that is so true. I used to walk a, a Frenchie in the same thing. But you know what? My pit bull, I can't get 10 feet the same thing. It's like walking a celebrity. My friend actually said that to me. She's like, what the hell? We can't even walk down the street. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. Because he's always wiggling and wagging and oh, saying yeah. hi to everybody. Who's that, it's who's really that cute. up there? Who's that back there? So that was Max, my last pit. He lived to 13, almost so 13. Happy. and He is. He is. He was a great dog. He was a little nervous, scared of a lot of things. But um, my dog now is like just personality plus i mean anywhere i go people are like where'd you get him i'm like the shelter go what's, there's a million what's the new the dog's name? my dog's name is cody cody okay cody yeah he's a good boy but so, um yeah if, if somebody wanted to join so yeah. we have a membership enrollment that opens periodically and the next one will be opening very soon in a week or so okay and anybody can just go on to our website they can if they want to learn more they can click the join button and it'll bring them to um, a page where they can sign up for a VIP wait list and then they can get on. And then if they ever had any questions, they can ask us questions and we'll walk them through the process. It's really pretty streamless, uh, seamless. Once they join, it'll give them a membership profile. They'll get put into our Facebook group. They'll get a lot of information from myself um, and from all the people that are in our group. Website? Say that again. Did they get a logo for their website. They get um, a membership profile, which is on our membership directory, and that's public on purpose. So if people are looking for certain different, you know, types of dog trainers, pet sitters in their area, whatever it is that they're looking for, a pet product, they can go to our membership directory and look at it. That's uh, it. It's that's, right there. That's, that's, that's super sexy what you said. Like, we periodically open up the, the books. We do. You can come in, but <laughs> not yet. So what? So what? So <laughs> not yet. So you. So you, it's not always open. Then you can't. It's. It's, it's not always open. It, it used to be, but you know what? It was always trying. You know, promoting, promoting, promoting. So what we do now is we close the doors a couple of times a year, and, and then a hundred percent of our time is helping our members and working with all of our members. I love that. And you know, besides all, that yeah, because so cool. you know what? That's why they join. Your focus. That's that's your totally. I like yep. that. It's not just so. Is there what's the membership fee? It depends. So we have two levels. We have a basic level, and then we have VIP. We also have nonprofit levels, and then we have um, corporate levels. So if you're a solo entrepreneur, there's a level for you. Either you choose VIP or basic. There's a couple extra perks with VIP, um, but that information will all be up on our website. It's Sign me It'll up. be confusing if I break it down. I'm going to be VIP. Say that again. VIP for me. Sign me up. <laughs> Rejoice and make sure we sign up for that 100%. Um, now, is it only for pet professionals? Can just people that can civilian like me? Organization? Can Chanelli Nail be part of this? So, here's the thing we have a few members that have been members for a while that are not quite at the owning their own business, but they want to learn, so they've joined. So as long as you're going to open a pet business, you can become a member. Uh, we have a few members right now that are really in the infant stages of starting a business, doing research, learning, and we're happy to welcome them in because, like, I want to see pet businesses be successful. And, you know, I met – we just the first time we're seeing each other on the, on the call here today – but I'm excited to meet anybody in the pet industry, right? Absolutely. I'm so excited when I hear about somebody that has a new idea or like yourself has been training forever and you and I have so many similarities. We get along. We're talking about all the same stuff, right? We, like you said, we were on the phone for hours. So I just am excited to meet anybody coming into the industry and want them to succeed. We're, so this time next year, 2021, where is your organization at? What's, what's the goal? Um, you know, right now our organization goal is to keep growing and to keep helping and always just talking to our members and seeing what they want to learn. Tonight we have a Zoom live networking event that's themed and that's came out of an event that we had last week. Oh, nice. And so what are you guys struggling with? What do you need help with? How can we do more? Um, so, you know, just keep doing it. more. Hopefully, hopefully my goal this year was to do a tour across the country and host different events in different areas because we've had events in multiple states for pet professionals but then COVID hit and I was like well I guess I'm not doing that this year so hopefully we'll be safe and be able to do that next year because I really want to do that and meet more people that would be super duper amazing 
And then yeah. I would love, I mean, I think that's, this is exploding through my, my mind and I really appreciate you coming onto our podcast and everyone, Chanelle Nell, our co-host and rejoice in the team. Um, it'd be great for you to um, send people that would be great for our podcast and our listeners out there. Absolutely. I, w- I appreciate you having me and I would love to meet you in person. I can't wait until we're safe so we can go and I can go back to Chicago and get to meet you and all that. Come on to Shot Town. We will welcome you for sure. And I, I want to come back out to New Shot York. City. To, to, to Long Strong Island. Um, no, I've been <laughs> out there. I, I, miss, I miss it out there. You guys. Come in the summer, though. It's nicer in the summer. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes the New York summers can be no joke, too. You got to come out there on the right day in the summer. New York, yeah. New York when it's hot, hot, is like no, is no joke. But no, it would be great to also bring on some guests. You know, if you have some guest recommendations. Um, that you want to have on our show, which be tremendous. Absolutely. Because you are doing, I cannot overemphasize this, and I'm saying this to everyone out there that might not really understand our industry because, you know, groomers are like their own world. You know, now, like you said, you were working with Corey and, you know, his, his online pet boutique. Pets and tech are its own world. Dog trainers, for sure, we're our own world. <laughs> you know, shelters and rescues in their own world. So mm-hmm. for you to know that your business for the last 13 years is interacting and engaging with everyone that is a lot yep. that that yeah it's hands down like a lot it's awesome <laughs> you know what the other thing is i love to be able to say hey here's a dog trainer to recommend it to somebody else as our members i have a a background behind the scenes of always sending out email intros to people like hey you need to know this person or you need to know this person. And I ask every single week in our email to my members saying, you know, you guys, if you need an intro, just let me know. I, it shouldn't be that difficult. I worked in TV. It was really hard to get an intro to people. <laughs> you know, it was really hard to get in that door. I'm like, I want to help you. So just let me know what it is. The other thing that uh, we also do that I did not mention is we send out a weekly pet events newsletter that goes out every Wednesday morning. That's been going out since 2008, which is insane to me that it's been, yeah. So it's pet events for all over the country and information and fun stuff in there. So you can find these sign up on our website that we mentioned earlier, AmericanPetProfessionals.com. And if you have an event coming up, just let me know about it. And then, one, and then can, can civilians be part of that? Yes, 100%. Wow. Well, I, some, I, I appreciate it. We, we knocked out a lot of information. I want everyone to go back and just review, listen to this. And if you're a pet professional out there, come under this umbrella. I am definitely signing up. Me and my squad, everyone with us. And can we bring you back in January? Yes, of course. I would love to be back. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Dana Humphrey, for, for connecting Thank us. Chanelle Nail, Toriano Sanzoni, the Wolf Keeper. Have an amazing Tuesday. Show love, be loved, give love, because there's only one alpha dog, and that's you. Be true. All right. See y'all next time. Wolf Keeper.